In today's video, we have the latest trade talk on teams like Montreal, Toronto, as well as Ottawa. We have some updated news around the Arizona Coyotes and moves they might make later in the season. More moves around the NHL waiver wire. All kinds of prospects have been demoted and some signings as well. All that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a ton of different news and some rumors to take a look at today. Uh, before we dive into it, though, I just want to wish a happy birthday to a couple of NHL hockey legends. Today's actually a birthday for both Patrick Waugh and Mario Lemieux. They're both 57 years of old age today. I hadn't realized after all this time that they actually had the exact same birthday. Hard to imagine. 57 years ago, both in the province of Quebec, one near Montreal, one near Quebec City. Two legends were born that would have a major impact on the game of hockey go down into record books as two of the greatest of all time so i know they won't likely see this but happy birthday patrick and mario i get lots of different news to talk about including uh the waiver wire let's start with waivers so a bunch more players today not quite as many as yesterday uh we had no claims yesterday as well so all waiver players yesterday did end up clearing and can be assigned to the american hockey league uh today uh, we have another group including the carolina hurricanes placing ryan dezingle max lajoie and lane peterson all on waivers. The New York Islanders have a variety of players here, including Arnaud Durando, Andy Andreoff, Parker Wurlespoon, Corey Schneider, and defenseman Dennis Shalowski. I thought maybe Shalowski might challenge for that last defensive spot. Um, obviously, they don't uh, want to put him there, which is probably good news for a young defenseman like a Robin Sallow, who appears to be on track to, uh, to be that number six defenseman on the roster which is pretty good. So that's good news for him. Uh, the Philadelphia Flyers also have some players on waivers, including Adam Brooks and Max Willman. Now, we also had a contract termination today, which is kind of odd because the contract wasn't signed all that long ago. But the Carolina Hurricanes and Grigory Dronov agreed to terminate their contract. That's only been signed for, I think it was not even a full week uh, after he goes to camp. And he was de de demoted to the American Hockey League. They wanted to send him to AHL. And he wasn't having it. And they come to terms to terminate the contract. So that brief experiment of Grigory Dronov and Carolina's organization uh, lasted much, uh, not very long and is over with now. Uh, some more news on players getting cut from training camp and a variety of spots here. Mostly we're going to talk with junior players, but we do have one NHL vet, and that's Victor Rask in Columbus, who has been released from his PTO. So it's another player unable to go to camp on a PTO and get a contract. Of course, the Jackets also had James Neal in camp, and he was also released, so they're not going to be gaining any NHL contracts. From that standpoint, there's still a bunch of players around the league on PTOs, but we've seen a few get contracts and a bunch be released. Uh, as far as other cuts that we've seen, some notable ones at least, uh, the, the LA Kings have announced this evening they've cut some players, including Toby Bjornfoot. I'm surprised here that Bjornfoot's being sent to the American Hockey League. Uh, he ended up appearing in 70 games last year. I thought he might have you know, secured his spot, so to speak, but... Not so much. Uh, young defenseman up and coming, former first round pick Brant Clark is still in training camp uh, and he appears to maybe be on an inside track to possibly get a roster spot and at least to, to start the season. So uh, we'll see. I would still suspect Bjorn Foot will be the, the first go to guy to be called up. Uh, once they you know need somebody due to injury or whatnot, and we'll see if Clark sticks. Uh, no guarantee he's going to make the full squad here once all the cuts are made, but right now things are trending in that direction. Uh, the Carolina Hurricanes, besides the players they put on waivers, also assign some uh, prospects to the minors. A few names that uh, would be more recognizable would be Anthony Honka, uh, Noel Gundler, and Peter Kochikov, of course, a young goaltender who had a chance to come up last year during the playoffs during Freddie Anderson's injury. Uh, the Philadelphia Flyers also made some notable demotions as well, including young forward Tyson Forrester, who I thought might have an outside shot at making the roster, and young defenseman Cam York, who I thought was not necessarily a lock, but I thought his odds were really good. Um, but he has been demoted. They still have some guys in camp there um, that, like uh, Ronnie Atard, for example, is uh, on track to maybe get that spot. Uh, so we'll see uh, what this means for York. Although I would suspect, based on comments from John Tortorella and other members of the media, they want York to be the top defenseman in the AHL and kind of go down and build his confidence and dominate local Philadelphia 
Reporters were saying, because I personally haven't seen him much, saying that he didn't really have a great camp. Uh, he was given some, um, I guess you could say, some advice or some uh, criticism, so to speak, some you know earlier in training camp on things that they wanted to see from him that they weren't seeing, and he never ended up showing it at a poor outing after. So they felt that he needs to take a step back before he takes a step forward. So bit of a surprising uh, prospect they're getting cut, but I guess it makes sense when you listen to the rationale behind it. Uh, the Islanders have also assigned a group to the American Hockey League, the Bridgeport, uh, including forwards Antu Rantu, William Dufour, uh, Holmstrom, and Ishikov. Uh, all four of them go down as well. And Minnesota Wild also have sent back Carson Lambos. He's going to junior, though. Uh, and the Montreal Canadiens uh, are sending back Owen Beck. He's been reassigned to the Ontario Hockey League. I was a little surprised, to be honest. I thought maybe Beck might get a small sample of regular season games. I didn't know that he would stick for the season, but he's been very impressive during training camp. Uh, to me, he's been more impressive than Uri Slavkovsky, the first overall pick in the 2022 draft. Of course, Beck was uh, taken differently, but still, like, Beck had a fantastic camp, like, you know, um, and to me, like, he just appeared to be a little bit more closer to being NHL ready, at least in my opinion, than Slavkovsky. Of course, the first overall pick's always going to be probably be given a little bit more rope, and uh, we'll see, um, but uh, Beck will go back to the, the OHL, and the Habs also announced today that they've signed the controversial first-round pick from the 2021 draft, taking 31st overall defenseman Logan Mayu. Of course, Logan Mayu's junior team was the London Knights. We know based on what happened, uh, you know, that he was over in, I believe it was Sweden, uh, when the OHL was shut down. I got into some legal trouble. I don't need to rehash the story. I'm sure you're all familiar with Logan Mayu. If you're not, you can Google it and get the full details. What he did was uh, really, really wrong. It was, uh, you know, uh, a terrible thing that he did. And the Montreal Canadiens did put out a statement when he announced a contract saying, uh, if I believe it was Ken Hughes quoted saying that they've, taking this under careful consideration, basically, uh, and that they've got a chance to get to know Logan Mayu more so. He spent a lot of time in Montreal over the summer uh, between management and his teammates, getting to know him more. And they're confident that he understands the impact of what he did and that, uh, you know, we can try to make some positives from it, I guess. But uh, still, you know, quite a controversial pick. Of course, that was a previous regime um, with, you know, Trevor Timmons and Mark Bergevin. Um, but Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon have uh, took their time with this, but they are, have officially signed him and will be officially giving him a chance to be part of the team uh, here in the near future. So I guess I'd be curious to see what everybody thinks of this controversial draft pick getting his NHL entry-level deal. Now, we also had a few other things around the league today, including a couple of rumors from Kevin Weeks, NHL insider. Uh, he says that there is some traction between the Ottawa Senators and newly acquired forward Alex DeBrinkett on an extension. Now, the way it kind of sounded earlier today, I uh, kind of made it sound like it was close enough that we might actually get news today. Of course, as I record this in the evening of Wednesday night, that has not been announced. Of course, you never know. It could be always be announced by the time this video makes it to YouTube, although I, I'm going to say probably not, but it could be coming soon by the sounds of things. Uh, I know debrinkett has been quite happy uh, based on some interviews he's done with how things have gone so far in the preseason. He's looked really, really good. Scored, I think he's up to three goals in the preseason and a few games he's played. He's really clicking with Claude Giroux uh, and Tim Stutzla for, uh, you know, having a real on pace for, uh, you know, to have a real solid regular season. So uh, all signs point to an extension getting done, which would be another phenomenal accomplishment by the Sens management group there in the summer of Pierre Dorian, as we've been calling it. We'll kind of go into the, the fall of Pierre if he can get this done. Certainly giving up a first round pick, uh, you know, in the package that they gave to the Blackhawks really, to me, wasn't overly expensive to get a quality player like DeBrinkett, but if they can get him to sign to an extension, uh, then it certainly it makes it even more worth it. But I would not be surprised at all if the DeBrinkett contract becomes the richest contract in Sens history and tops all of the other recent signings. We've seen, obviously, Stutzla and Norris get deals this year. Drew signed as a free agent. Of course, last year we got, like, uh, Kachuk Batherson, Shabbat a couple of years back. I would suspect that DeBrinkett's deal will probably be the biggest of the bunch, but we'll have to wait and see um, when that gets completed, and hopefully it does soon, and we might have some more news to discuss here in the coming days. Jumping back to the Montreal Canadiens here quickly as well, there was some reports from Montreal Hockey Now indicating that there could be interest again in a young player to the LA Kings organization, Gabe Velarde. Of course, the Habs had 
high interest in this player before. Uh, Gabe Velarde, like we talked about LA making cuts earlier. If Velarde does not make the team, and to be honest, I don't think he's going to, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, he's at a point in his career now where he's no longer waivers exempt. So to go to the minors, he needs waivers now. So he, he's going to be a player, I'm sure, that the Kings are careful with because uh, even though they may not feel that like he's one of their top 12 forwards right now, uh, I'm sure they don't want to lose him for nothing. So I wouldn't be shocked if they're maybe trying to facilitate a trade to get something in return. Um, but I know I've seen reports out of Montreal that they're expecting him to maybe be available on waivers and thinking Montreal, who showed interest in the past, we know they're wanting to accumulate a lot of young talent, that maybe they'll go for him again. The only thing I'd caution you on is that the connection to Gabe Velarde uh, was the Max Pacioretty trade that never came to be. But there was a really close call between the Montreal Canadiens and the LA Kings at the draft a few years back, uh, where Mark Bergevin, of course, the GM at the time, was that close to trading Max Pacioretty to the LA Kings for a package of players. And one of those guys coming back was Velarde. But, of course, the deal got nixed by Pacioretty, and it never came to be. He ended up later getting traded to Vegas, as we now know. Of course, I brought them Nick Suzuki and other pieces in that deal, right? Um, so, of course... That's a different regime in Montreal. And where does Mark Bergevin work now? Well, he works in Los Angeles as an advisor to Rob Blake. So I'm not going to say that Montreal wouldn't be interested because he is an interesting young player. Maybe they want to add another guy to that to their mix. You can never have too much talent. He plays center. Lots to like. He had a high upside, but battled a really bad back injury. I don't know where things stand with his career exactly, but um, I'm not going to you know, totally dismiss this report. I just don't know that it's fair to say that where they've shown interest before, that they're probably going to make a move again if he becomes available, just because that it's different guys running the show. So we'll have to see. But no matter if it's Montreal or somebody else, Gabe Velarde is a player to me that uh, it will be interesting to see if he does move on. Uh, there was some talk in the offseason that the LA Kings were – Probably going to look to try to find a way to move him um, because of the fact that he wasn't going to be waivers exempt anymore. They probably didn't see him being part of their top 12 forwards moving forward. And it's, this might be time for a fresh start for everybody involved here. But of course, the deal has never materialized. So we will see where things go on that front. If it's Montreal or somewhere else, wouldn't be shocking if he gets moved. Uh, there is rumors as well out of the Leafs organization that they do very much want to sign Zach Aston Reese, who's there on a PTO as well. Uh, of course, as we talked about, it's, it's looking pretty good for him to do that. But of course, we're probably going to see other players within the forward group either get waived or get traded if they can find a deal for them. But you're probably looking at guys like Adam Gaudet. To me, he's played his way out of the equation. He's got three or four guys that he's battling with all kind of so far, in my opinion, at least had a better camp. Um, I wonder about Gadet. I wonder about Joey Anderson. Uh, you know, Malgan has looked good. Aston Reese has looked pretty good. Even Alex Steves has looked pretty good. Like, you know, there, there's a variety of guys there that, you know, can certainly take that spot. And even Nick Robertson's had a really good preseason. So I would suspect that, um, you know, you're going to see a couple of leaf forwards. Even Wayne Simmons is another one. Uh, I wonder if there's a spot for him. And I, I'm sure Toronto is not going to want to put. Too many guys through waivers because every year around this time when they're getting to down to the roster cuts or early in the season, the Leafs always lose a, a few players on waivers. That They usually have an abundance of guys on cheap contracts. They can only keep so many. That just seems to be how they like to do business every year. And I'm, you know, I'm not uh, discrediting that because it's worked for them to be able to have you know, good depth that's surrounding their top guys that are not expensive. That can be hard to find. If you have an abundance of it, you know you're going to lose a couple. You're willing to deal with it. That's just how it goes. Um, but at the same time, if you can get a return on it, even better. So we'll see where things go. It's also been reported that the Leafs may be looking for a depth defenseman. I wouldn't suspect that they're looking for anything Major it could be somebody who's already cleared waivers who could be kind of on standby at the AHL. It would be a good call up option, or it could be, uh, you know, maybe somebody making under a million bucks on a two way deal. Like it's, it's something like that. I don't think they're looking to make anything big moves, but we've seen them have a lot of injured defensemen lately. Uh, we know that Dahlstrom's out for pretty much the season. We know Lilgren's out for six weeks. Uh, you know, obviously Jordy Ben got hurt. Uh, there's just a lot of injuries on that back end. And it wouldn't be terrible if they could find a way to pick up maybe one more guy just, uh, you know, as, as a call-up option, somebody who could play a third pair minute in a pinch. So we'll see. That could be done by trade. It could be done by making a waiver claim. Hard to say, but I do expect some moves before opening night 
out of Toronto as they finalize their roster here. Uh, the Arizona Coyotes have a player who's likely going to be getting one of the bigger attentions, I think, around trade deadline time, and that's Shane Gossespair. We know that Gossespair was basically given away by the Flyers because they thought he couldn't really play anymore, and he completely revitalized his career last year, put up 51 points. Uh, you know, Obviously, he's in the final year of his contract, which in my opinion has been a bargain the whole time. I don't really know exactly why the production fell off in Philly, but if he was able to pick things back up and have wasn't his, uh, his wasn't the career year, but it was like his second best year last year on a really crappy Arizona team who didn't score a ton of goals. So if he can do that there, imagine what he can do on a high powered offensive team where he'd have better players to pass the puck to. So you know, Gosses Bear will definitely be a player to watch as the season goes along. Uh, maybe even he becomes a player traded even sooner than that, depending on what the prices are. Are at. We'll see, but definitely a player that we haven't talked about in a long time. That's somebody to watch, in my opinion. And Frank Sarah Valley also put out an article today on dailyfaceoff.com making his bold predictions for the upcoming season. I will be putting out such a video as well sometime between now and opening night. I don't know what day it's going to be released yet because I'm still working on it um, to make some, it's just for fun, just to make some predictions for the year. But his one of, one of his bold predictions I want to mention is he feels that sometime between now and the end of the year, so by Christmas time before January 1st, that the Ottawa Senators will continue the, the moves that they've made and will trade for Jacob Chikorin. He sees them as a front runner. He mentions the LA Kings as being in the mix as well. We've heard St. Louis. We've heard Columbus. Um, but, you know, Elliot Friedman says right now things appear to be still somewhat quiet, but Frank has put it out there that he's predicting that Chikorin will be an Ottawa Senator sometime in the next few months. He's still working on getting himself healthy and getting on the ice. Um, so we'll see where this goes. But be interesting to see if uh, Frank uh, gets his prediction right. We've talked about Chikorin a lot. The Senators have been the main team linked to him. And uh, we'll see if he's accurate. So let me know your thoughts and everything discussed here today down in the comments. We'll talk about it further. Of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Oh,